These are the top five tech things that will make 2020 really fun. How do you rank these? It's gotta be by excitement, of course. At number five is the continuing streaming wars. Soon, more and more content will be available to stream. We've got NBC Universal's upcoming Peacock service. That means The Office and Parks and Rec will have new streaming homes. Then we've got the Viacom CBS merger that just happened. Disclosure time, Viacom CBS is the parent company of CNET. That being said, Viacom and CBS both had streaming services already. Now I have no inside information on this, but it seems like a bundle or maybe a consolidation of those services could happen. Then there's HBO Max. It looks like it's going to be huge. For the same price as HBO Now, there will be content from Warner Brothers, Cartoon Network, DC, and of course, HBO. So many services coming after your wallet. Number four is better in-screen fingerprint scanners. I know, I know, you're thinking this is more exciting than all the streaming services? Yes, yes it is. Qualcomm has a new scanner called the 3D Sonic Max Reader. It is 17 times larger than the previous generation. That should mean it will be a lot easier to use. The Samsung Galaxy S10 and Note 10 both use Qualcomm's 3D Sonic sensor. People complained that it was slow and it was difficult to find the exact spot. Now, why was that? The sensor area was four millimeters by nine millimeters. The new 3D Sonic Max is 20 millimeters by 30 millimeters. With this huge increase, you won't be hunting for a little sensor anymore. There's also increased security because the big sensor gives the phone a clearer image of the fingerprint. You can bet Samsung will be putting the 3D Sonic Max in its phones. Reports say that Apple might jump on board too. When it comes to everyday usage, this little sensor should be great. Number three is the upcoming Google Fitbit goofiness. Google picked up Fitbit for $2.1 billion, and so the great experiment will happen. Google has Wear OS, which is a flop. That's right, I said it, fight me. There is no Wear OS device that can compete with anything Apple makes. That's kind of sad, really. Now Google is swallowing up Fitbit. Fitbit has a little thing called Fitbit OS running on its Versa smartwatches. How long can it survive? Why is this exciting? All the possible outcomes are interesting. Imagine a scenario where Google puts lots and lots of money into Fitbit and Fitbit catches up with Apple and features. Imagine a scenario where Wear OS takes over Fitbit OS. That could be disastrous or really successful if Wear OS is tweaked like crazy thanks to the Fitbit team. What about if Google just lets Fitbit keep going like a little independent company within Google? That's the least interesting, but it definitely would be weird. Number two, Microsoft Madness. The company showed off two foldable Surface devices in 2019, set for release in 2020. There's a Surface Neo. It has two nine inch displays. It's running Windows 10 X for dual screen devices. It's one of the crazier takes on a tablet slash computer. When you want it to act like a traditional laptop, you can snap a magnetic keyboard to one side. The remaining screen area of that side can be used as a trackpad or run an app. Then there's the Surface Duo. This little guy has two 5.6 inch screens, runs Android, and has a modem. Microsoft says it's a Surface device, but most of us think of it as a phone. Could Microsoft actually be a player in the phone game again after its miserable last attempt? I don't know, but these are incredibly bold additions to the Surface lineup. Then there's the Xbox Series X, set for the holiday season 2020. Microsoft unexpectedly unveiled the device in a teaser. The name suggests there could be more than one in the series. Maybe Microsoft will offer variants at launch. Oh, and there's going to be competition with Sony's PS5 slated for the same time. And the number one most exciting tech thing in 2020 has to be the rise of 5G. Yes, 5G is already here, but it should be mainstream in 2020. Qualcomm unveiled a couple of new chips that have built-in 5G modems. Oddly, it's not their top of the line model, it's the Snapdragon 765 and 765G. That should mean we'll see mid-range phones in 2020 supporting 5G. It won't just be the super expensive ones. Don't worry though, the top of the line phones will also have 5G, but it will come through a separate modem. Samsung has several 5G devices, but Google and Apple don't. I expect that to change in 2020. In 2019, Apple purchased Intel's smartphone modem division for a billion bucks. This will definitely factor into the 5G iPhone. Maybe it'll show up in 2020. Also, Google has a shot to line up its Pixel 5 with 5G. I mean, that's kind of perfect, right? 5G all the things. 2020 should also be when USB 4 devices come out. It's supposed to be crazy fast. Check this out to find out more. 
I wonder where self-driving cars will fit into 2020. That'll be interesting too. Thanks for watching. I'm Maya Zaktar and I'll see you online.